in electronics when you have a couple resistances I did a drawing there and the uh, schematic uh, right there uh, if you have resistances that have a voltage across them and then you tap in between them you will get a fraction of that total voltage if they're equal value resistances I'm using 10k resistors right here you will get uh, 10 volts where they I mean 5 volts where they connect together if you are powering it with 10 volts you'll get half of whatever the supply voltage is there you can see that in schematic form right there now if you try to use that uh, I'm going to put in quote marks 5 volts to power a load you cannot do so directly so if we put a load that needs a current that's going to throw it off because that current has to also go through in this case because it's going to ground that 10k uh, resistor and um, less current means uh, less uh, voltage and uh, so you can see we got ground there um, it's going to pull that voltage down now the LED is uh, conducting a little bit you got a slight glow up there this one's a lot brighter um, it's better circuitry for this um, so some current is trickling through um, but whatever current is trickling through it's going to suck down uh, that voltage we'll take uh, measurements uh, later and here's the schematic form uh, right there I'm using 220 ohm uh, resistor to protect the LED because we want 5 volts half of that 10 volts as I said uh, before and uh, there you can see um, definitely we don't have 5 volts across those two components um, it's probably uh, red LEDs uh, they start conducting a little bit of current at about 1.5 volts and this is a little bit of current so it's probably especially right there about 1.5 probably slightly higher right there but not much more if you had over 10 milliamps of current going through it'd be closer to 2 volts so jumping over here to uh, save time we have a better solution so ultimately if you have a uh, voltage at part of a circuit and you want to use a voltage that's the same as that to power a load in this case uh, 5 volts and uh, we're not going to actually get 5 volts with this particular circuit we got other circuitry where we could um, but we are just going to look at this voltage with the base of the transistor for the most part and that's going to tell the transistor because it's wired as an emitter follower to uh, output that same voltage other than we're going to lose about 0.6 volts because the emitter here um, it drops about 0.6 volts it's like a diode right there and um, so it's going to try to get uh, 5 minus about 0.6 so about 4.4 approximately volts across the load here now of course if this had to power the load it would drop further but uh, when a little trickle of current starts going through it allows a lot more current uh, from base to emitter there allows a lot more collector to emitter current and ultimately it's going to let whatever current is needed to go through to uh, keep this about 0.6 volts less than right there um, so we're not going to really draw any current you know just a trickle this is going to hold pretty steady but it's going to allow a lot more current to flow there it's going to uh, balance so that's an emitter follower because we're using an NPN bipolar junction transistor it has an emitter the load is following it um, following the emitter uh, to ground right there and of course I have a pictorial uh, right there this is the pin layout left pin is the emitter where the arrow is uh, middle pin is the base where the bar is right there I think it's the correct way to say that and uh, the line coming out with uh, no arrow is the collector so if you swivel it and you put the left side to the uh, right I mean the flat side to the right in the case of the physical opponent then on top you have collector base emitter and there you can see the connections although they're in different directions I was making pictorials uh, a while ago I got a website too and uh, for people that don't want to watch the videos I figured I'll have a pictorial and a schematic so now the uh, measurements I have the multimeter here all we're going to measure is voltage uh, right there I don't have to move the red probe for anything unless I'm going to measure high current which I am not going to do and uh, there you can see this says 10 milliamps it actually was saying 11 milliamps before and we have uh, 10 on there and uh, that's going to add up the current of these two uh, circuits but this one uh, probably has hardly any it uh, most of the time it probably would not affect the reading on that uh, power supply so we can go anywhere um, where there's the uh, positive supply I'll go directly up here to this jumper and those jumpers which uh, connect to the power supply there you can see we have 10 volts at the supply so um, before we look at the 5 volts where they connect together um, there you can see we got about 1.8 uh, volts there so a little bit more 
as I said before, than uh, 1.5. So that's about what will build up across the red LED when there's not much current going through. In fact, we can measure that right now. That's a good measurement. There you can see a 1.7 and the rest of the voltage that we got is across the resistor, which you can look at by measuring the resistor uh, directly right there across there. That's uh, the LED drop plus the extra voltage going across the resistor to set the current and you could do the math to determine uh, how much current flowing. So this is just the negative supply now. That resistor, that LED there comes to a dead end. It doesn't affect the voltage anymore. That zero volts uh, ground. And um, we come here, there you can see, we got five volts at this voltage divider, or we could just measure uh, the voltage divider uh, directly right there. In relationship to ground, we got uh, uh, five volts right there. This is also five volts higher because it's 10 volts than that point right there. Um, so yeah, here we got uh, basically the same thing. We got the voltage divider. It has to provide power to this uh, load, but uh, hardly any, just a little trickle goes through. So I'm guessing it's probably not exactly as high. I don't remember the exact number on there. It wasn't exactly five, but very close five. But this is probably, you know, just a spec uh, lower right here. Um, but uh, there you can see, it's, uh, it's actually lower than I expected, but uh, you know, we're kind of low there. We could add a resistor there, um, would probably, you know, it would draw less current and um, it would probably hold that better, but it's definitely doing a lot better than it was up there. And now we can measure the emitter right there. So it's gonna be a little bit lower. And uh, so, as I said before, we're gonna have about, uh, two volts there we go that's a uh, pretty close to spot on two volts across there so this is a 220 ohm resistor there's about 2.2 volts uh, left after that that goes across the resistor since it's 220 ohms that definitely tells us that we have about 10 milliamps of current uh, going uh, through uh, this part of the circuit basically this whole part right there this is drawing some uh, current uh, but for the most part we got you know really close to about 10 milliamps of current going through the transistor, the LED, and the resistor um, because we got that emitter follower going over here. Now, we need to make sure that uh, this uh, resistor is always connected to ground there to keep the voltage lower. If I pluck this, then we'll have 10 volts uh, coming from the uh, supply and uh, then we would have like 9.4 volts at the output um, right there. So we can't break up uh, the uh, lower side of the voltage divider. We can plug this now with zero volts, but if I plug the other one, it would be 10 volts 